Hey guys, welcome to the Trade Genius Podcast. Bob and Phil here as always. Today's episode, we're going to talk about the great disconnect, and that is because we're seeing some of the most bullish price action we've seen in a while, and yet we're seeing the exact opposite under the hood. Uh, things are going down. So we wanted to go over that data with you, just so you guys are aware that this rally is not like the others. So let's dive in. Trade Genius. Hey guys, I'll tell you something that we do that really will change the way in which you look at trading and also absolutely help you increase your profitability and how much money you make. It's the Trade Genius newsletter. We put the newsletter out Sunday night through Thursday night, and this really looks at the plumbing of the markets and helps prepare you for the next trading day and help you make money. And, and we give you a lot of information. We give you market statistics. We give you market levels. We give you the seasonality, what's happening with different sectors of the market, and we will help you identify whether the market's in a bear mode or a bull mode, or whether it's euphoric, whether it's despondent, and it just puts you in a position to be on the right side of the trade. So Take advantage of our offer that we have below and you'll love it. I mean, one trade that you make with this thing could pay for definitely a month, maybe even a year's worth of service. It's that powerful. Use promo code podcast for 15% off the retail price of newsletter. Thanks for listening. The divergences we're seeing here, Bob, is quite impressive. And I don't think we've seen uh, such a disconnect between what the bulls are doing and what the fundamentals, which seem to have a 100% hit rate, are telling us uh, under the hood of the markets here. Yeah, look, I mean, the great disconnect is uh, is upon us. You know, and it's so funny. When I listen to the, the, the banter online, people make it sound like this is, this is like a no-brainer bull market. And I think that's really talking your book kind of approach. Yeah. So I actually went back, we're going to talk about a couple charts here in a second, but if you just, if you bear me with this, um, this monologue, a lot of people saying, oh, it's simple math. The Fed is, is creating this increasing inversion and that's what's causing the market to go higher. So I went back and looked at every inverted yield curve from 1978 forward and the one I noticed two things. One is that it's not as simple as we just go straight up. It's it, there's a lot of volatility and a lot of actually double bottoms in those moves. Number one and number two, there's a some straight out collapses in price. So if people are feeding you this narrative that oh it's because the inverted yield curve is inverting, that's why we're going higher. Uh, I want to disabuse you. The math doesn't support it. But what the math does support, Phil, is once they stop it, you know, inverting automatic recession every single time, seven for seven. So set that aside for a second. I just want to let you know, because Powell's done either this one or the next one. He's done, done. He can't keep pushing up. The banks actually will all go bankrupt. <clears throat> but I did pull out a chart on, on ISM manufacturing because you were, you were pulling some charts out and showing us over the weekend, Phil, how basically ism is collapsing yeah and companies are actually they're not buying from china and there's some shipping data that tells us what's going to happen in the um the fourth quarter christmas isn't coming this year santa is staying in the north pole and people are not buying their fourth quarter products from china everybody's drawing out of warehouses and inventory right now and you can see the ism is just collapsing and you can see here on this chart is that um uh, spy and ism go together and we have just a massive massive disconnect yep. the next chart i want to show you is the reason why we've been having this disconnect and phil's been talking about this forever and and do you have the fred chart up phil yes i do so the fred chart is um is showing us that um the the bank reserves if you notice in, in 2009 when the we came out of the last financial crisis the federal reserve said hey we can't rely on the banks holding reserves to, to lend to each other because they're going to freeze each other out so we're going to act as that interbank lending facility and it was pulling down going into 2020 and then and with the pandemic response, we basically lifted the reserves up 300 percent. And you notice they were <clears throat> they were going down again. And in this last six months, you notice the reserves were pushing up. And right. it basically is just a, it's just Play-Doh for the markets, Phil. Right. And so this is why behind the scenes, you know, when the Fed is pumping money into the system, it's hard to go the other way. So now these other things that we're seeing is that regardless of the Fed pumping, it's like giving steroids to somebody who's dying. OK, yeah. um, and I don't mean that morbidly. I mean, I I took care of my father-in-law as he was as he was passing many years ago. 
And, you know, when he was fading, they would they would literally give him steroids so that he could function some. And, and he was great for maybe a, a three days to a week, and then he would fade again till pretty much it didn't work anymore. That's what's mm. happening here. And that ending, Phil, is called the Minsky moment. And mm. so, you know, where more stimulation doesn't actually stimulate anything, it goes the other way. And you can see here is that we have, we have firms now filing for bankruptcy. It's going to accelerate over the next two years because they're not going to be able to absorb the yep. increased interest charges for um, that are coming on debt levels. Right. And you have another one as well, I think. Yeah, the, the interesting thing on the bankruptcy chart is that the um, you'll notice that when you get to 30, so basically what this is saying is that over 30 uh, a number of firms filing for bankruptcy in the quarter, once you surpass 30, you're in recession territory. Uh, so the, that's what that horizontal line at 30 means. The blue line is the number of bankruptcies in a quarter. And the uh, you can see those vertical lines going down to those circles essentially are our, our, our last uh, three recession periods of obviously COVID being very brief, but yet it still was one. So we're definitely in recession territory fundamentally as far as, I mean, there's, if you think about it, you know, why should the stock market be rocketing when your, you know, your core components of the economy are faltering in a big way? So every time we've seen this, it's been recessionary and that's why you have to be very careful in this market. And then I yeah, think about and the next also one. you're going to show market breadth too, right, Phil? Yeah, the next Correct. The next chart is market breadth. And Bob, I don't know about you, but I don't, this one jumped out at me really the most. I don't think I've seen, I don't think I've seen such a vertical move and breadth going the exact opposite. It's pretty wild. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's the thing that makes us to the headbanger because the headlines get all the attention and because we're market cap weighted, uh, it's lifting the index, but underneath we're hollowing out. Yeah. And what I heard this weekend too was really fascinating. People say, "Hey, it's uh, it's basically a game of chicken right now." The the market is is assuming that Powell does not have the the intestinal fortitude to hold the to hold the interest rates higher. And I think I think right. you know we're going to see who wins that game. But at any rate, with with the with the fangs up at thirty three PE and the rest of the market is seventeen, we are <laughs> two to five times over overvalued. And so it's just really a matter of time before math takes over. And you have a really cool chart. I'll let you explain it because you're a little more comfortable with this data. But this is really fascinating about this. And I think it speaks to um, the volatility that's coming, if not an outright market, uh, you know, I want to call it crash, but market sell off. Yeah. So this is the city polls index, which stands for um, positioning, optimism and leverage. Uh, and it's just a, their proprietary measurement of those uh, data points points and they come up with the number uh, an index level if you will and so where you, things get interesting is when you get up into uh, 16 level and I think we're printing up near uh, between 18 and 20 at the moment over there on the right hand side of the chart if you notice when those things do get or these readings get elevated and especially if you start to notice where the market peaked out there uh, just before the beginning of 2022 you know that's where you can draw a line there I don't have a line there on there sorry but if you draw an imaginary line there that's where the quantitative uh, tightening started right so they're effectively taking liquidity away from the system versus prior to that adding liquidity to the system now even when they were adding liquidity to the system or accommodating, um, you'll notice that when we get those elevated readings, uh, at the very least, you're probably looking at a 5% to 7% pullback pretty sharp. When we get these readings in this environment of quantitative tightening, and now remember, it's not just the Fed, even the global liquidity markets are not adding liquidity. They're falling off a cliff. I don't have that chart up, but take my word for it. The liquidity in the global markets is also going south. So when you get these uh, large readings like this, these moves up are short lived. So in, us, in other words, you, you know, it, it's, it acts like it's never going to stop, but then it tends to V reverse down. So we want to be very, uh, we want to look very closely in the next coming days as we, if we get a, a big large red day or two consecutive red days, that could be the start of your V reversal. And I would only be looking for that because uh, this index has been fairly consistent on the elevated readings and especially in the QT environment that we, we shave off a lot of points really quickly. I mean, we can undo a lot of this move that we've seen in the last three weeks. We could do it in, in a third of the time. We could be take it all back in one week. And, uh, and then people are going to be going like, oh, maybe this market isn't so strong after all. I think the data is there telling you that. It's just that right now you just have a lot of derivative squeezing going on. But at some point, just like it ended in 2021, going into 2022, you will run out of steam and that cycle ends. And then it collapses in on itself because the actual fundamental buying isn't there. It's amazing. And and. 
tomorrow, guys, we're going to show you um, a chart that'll just absolutely blow you away just to show you that we're living in a bizarre universe. And also, too, for the, the trolls out there, I'm going to show you the basically the last 15 trades that we recommended with the service. <clears throat> And also, I'll show you the long-term performance of the uh, of the recommendations that we put out there, just to disabuse people of the notion. Even though we talk bearish, we trade op optimistically bullish, and so um, we, uh, or I should say, opportunistically bullish. And so uh, we're going to show you that, plus a few other things that uh, you know we wanted to be positive. It, it, the data is just staring at us and and i don't think we would be doing you guys a service if we said hey uh, uh a new bull market's inbound because uh we don't see it in the data and trust me i'd rather be bullish than bearish because you can make you can make a lot more money even though the bearish moves are sharp they're hard to trade and so uh you know you're, you're a lot of time most people are better off stepping aside or making one or two very calculated short trades or hedges you know and uh and I feel I'll leave you with some final comments on that as well, because you're really, really conservative trader. And, and you know, kind of what's your view on trading this coming bear? Well, I think that from now, now this is what's weird. Seasonality tells us that we're in the strongest period that the markets usually see during the year. However, if you take what's happened going into this, it's very unusual. So we're dealing with an outlier situation going into what is, you know, seasonally very bullish. I actually think that we're going to catch down to liquidity because there's such a divergence here, not only in liquidity, but other uh, fundamentals that we've shown you guys uh, in today's videos and other you know videos prior to this. So I do think we're going to get a catch down to this uh, derivative squeeze that we are seeing. And I think we could probably go down into next month. Now, here's the weird part is that the yield curve isn't done inverting. It's still going lower. We thought we had a bottom a couple of months ago, Bob, when it started to go back up and it didn't. What this does is this pushes out, you know, we're looking for a, a prolonged bear environment uh, coming out of this and it actually pushes that off. So we could see, let's say a dip in August, we could see um, a local bottom there and the market kind of, you know, pushes back up. And then maybe even as late as Q1 or Q2 of 2024 next year is when we really see like a very bearish environment and that pushes all the way through 2024 into 2025. And why do I say that? It's because when you have a yield curve uh, inversion as deep as this one is, you know, once that bottoms, you have to look about a hundred weeks out as, we, as we've talked about before. So surprisingly, the market has actually pushed all of this out further only because the yield curve has inverted further uh, since the last time we looked at it. So we that's a very reliable indicator. And it's just surprising that it went deeper than we thought it would, right? We thought it would have bottom already and, and then we'd be further along in the process. So this has actually pushed this out. So uh, maybe it's taken another four months longer than what we thought. We have to push the timeline out. But I think ultimately at the end of the day, we're gonna see that bearish price action. It's just gonna take more time than we thought just because of the yield curve. Yeah, and, and so so guys, you know, um, you're, you're being warned. Um, uh, and a lot of times when these markets push up like this, the fall off's really, really, really steep. And so, you know, you have the comparisons that are coming up the most is like the, the recession after World War II and also the 1968 to 1982 um, stagflation environment. So, mm. you know, we're not quite sure where we are, but either way, you get really sharp pullbacks and the market doesn't trend for basically 18 to 20 years. It's just going to be a uh, a lot of whipsawing. So, you know, you're, you're going to have to plan accordingly as as um, one quant trader put it is you can't be a beta buy and hold uh in this next in this next environment because you'll you'll actually lose 30 to 40 percent nominal value with inflation eating into a stagnant stock market so it's going to be um definitely going to become a stock pickers market here uh going forward after we get this next big pullback fill yep i agree it's gonna be interesting times ahead all right guys well that's going to do it let us know your thoughts below in the comments and we'd love to hear what you think uh, would happen in the next uh, six to 12 months. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe. Smash that notification bell and set it to all if you can. And we'll see you on tomorrow's video. Take care. Trade